rate might not have changed much. The property tax revenue did in the way the base uh, was adjusted downward by the appraisal. And you, and you can also see there that the council's decision back in 2003 to become less reliant on that bulk for new source really came into play in these last fiscal years as the sales tax did decrease. Had we been as reliant as we were uh, back in 99-00 when we were at 42%, that decreasing sales tax would have had a much bigger hit. So for 11 to 12, you see those percentages being 31, 33, 35 percent as compared to the 42, 27, and 30 percent back in 99. Uh, potentially volatile revenues, obviously, in addition to sales tax, are our host fees, which are at 1.5 million, our telecom fees, which continue to drop every year, and this year are down to 522,000, and then our fines, which make up 4.9 million dollars of our general fund revenue. And that is 8% of your total revenues, which is 9% last year. So this year it's only 8%, which is a good in the good direction. As a sales tax, which we've talked a lot about already, um, that kind of shows you the actuals. Our high was back in 2007, where we got 19.2 million. Um, and then you see the drop in 0809 down to 17.6. And last year it was at 18.6. This year we're estimating 18.6 also what we have in place for 11-12. For your property tax rate analysis, our current, our current rate is 44 of 21, 44 cents. Um, if we need a rate equal to what our base budget is right now for the normal fund, it would be at 43, 397. If we had no sales tax revenue and we're dependent entirely on property tax, that would equal a rate at 73 cents. And any other revenue, if it was all just property tax, you would be at 95 cents. All of that's assuming our current debt rate of 11732 And that's all I have on revenue. Does Bill have any questions on revenue? Okay. Um, on to expenditures. And okay. I have a question on sure. The land field fee that continues to go down. There are actually two sources of that. You talk about the host fees in there? Yes. Uh, one is the Allied Landfill, that is uh, the construction-based landfill that's off of College Street. And it's, since it's construction materials only, their volume kind of depends on what's happening in the construction industry. When the construction industry is booming, we see those fees increase. Right. When in, as in the case of the last two years, the construction industry falls off the, the table, the fees decrease significantly. Uh, the waste management side of that, the host fee of waste management is not quite so volatile. It's not, it's not just construction materials, it's garbage as well. And so it doesn't tend to fluctuate as much as the light ally one does. But even so, it will decrease also during economic uh, stress because there are not as many commercial businesses that are paying customers. People you know, don't uh, rent as many dumpsters and, and activity just tend, tends to uh, slow down. And so the amount of money that's going coming from the unloading of garbage at the landfill goes down. The way that host fee works, it's a you know, dollar per ton. Dollar twenty, dollar twenty per ton, and so the more volume that goes into the landfill, the more we make. The less volume that goes in the landfill, the less. Right, thank you. Okay, on the expenditure side, and this goes on for a while, so they'll need to take a break at some point. Just uh, I'll get from there, and then interrupt me as you uh, need to for questions. Okay. Uh, operating expenditures, last year's actual was $58 million. Uh, budget for 10-11 was $59.4. Our estimates slightly less than that uh, throughout the uh, culmination of this year. Our base budget for next year is set at $60.4, and that's a $972,000 increase, which of course matches the revenue number that Gina referenced earlier, and so it's a balanced budget as required by council policy. The high charts here show the operating expenditures by type, and unlike 
the utility fund where the biggest part of that pie was in debt service and capital improvements. Here in the general fund, the biggest part of the pie is in personal services, personnel, as John and I were talking about earlier this week. Uh, these are the costs. Huh? You have to fix that connection. Oh, I kind of like it more than I get it. This is the cost of the people that provide the services in the general fund, the policemen, the firemen, the rec aides, the staff. Uh, the rest of the pie is relatively small, accounts for uh, services that are charged only being 10%, transfers and reimbursements 5, and supplies at 4, 4 to 5%, given, depending on what we do each year. So when you're looking at the general fund, you're looking at primarily people and staff needed to conduct those services. And when you look at it by department, you can see, again, uh, the historical uh, trend and, and this is the case in most cities. The police and fire department are going to be your primary expenditures. Uh, those reflect the priorities of the population and the cost of those services. Those tend to be uh, high cost services because of the, especially now, the technology involved, but also because of the manpower involved. So here you're talking about 30, almost 34 million uh, in a $60 million budget being police and fire. So it's more than 50% of your general fund budget. The rest of the departments uh, are smaller in comparison. Uh, there's some things that are not uh, reflected here because we're talking about this being the general fund. For example, Parks and Leisure Services has some resources in another fund, the 4B sales tax fund. Uh, but for the most part, uh, the rest of this is pure general fund and doesn't have uh, much in the way of resources elsewhere. And of course, at the very bottom, there's your budget that will be anything in your council's budget. Okay, next slide. The cost increases here in the general fund because they're related primarily to personnel were primarily in the area of TMRS health insurance, you can see that between the two of those, that uh, pretty much paid up most of that revenue, if not more than the revenue difference that uh, we budgeted this year. Uh, we did one minor uh, cost-saving item that uh, Bob's uh, people put into the pot, and that is to decrease mowing of uh, medians by four cycles, uh, save $27,000. That's something that you'll have to manage if it looks like he needs to increase that back um, due to rainfall or just the, uh, the way that the mediums look, we'll have to deal with that during the year. But we're going to try to get by with these four decrease cycles and see how it looks. That is primarily the claims cost. What we do on the health insurance plan is we have, we're self, partially self-insured, so we have claims costs, and then we have insurance that we buy for two things. One is to stop any individual claim from exceeding a certain amount, and the other one is to stop aggregate claims from exceeding a certain amount. So those are the only areas that we actually pay premiums to insurers for. The rest of it is basically pay as you go ourselves. So the bulk of this cost represents the increase in claims costs. Uh, okay. okay, some additional things that we had to put into the budget this year. Uh, $72,000 to cover the cost of the animal shelter and adoption facility. Uh, we're planning on opening that mid-year, uh, this coming budget year. We've got funding for electricity and water and sewer services, uh, some janitorial and other services. Uh, I've got a full year in here because we really don't like trying to split that off for half a year and then have to absorb it next year. So this does cover for the year's cost and we won't see an impact next year. Uh, we've got $55,000 for PC phone critter replacements and another $50,000 that uh, was put in the uh, reserve category for that purpose. So a total of 105000 for ITS to replace uh, this equipment as needed throughout the organization. Uh, 
Uh, we've got forty thousand uh, dollars here for janitorial services, primarily for FCL brand. There's a little bit in there for the animal shelter for the public areas that uh, are not maintained by the staff there. And then we've got thirty-nine thousand for the for a shelter attendant at the animal shelter. Because the center is bigger, we anticipate having uh, much more activity from the public there, and we want to make sure that it's maintained properly. Uh, we need to add that position. And actually, projected when we built the shelter, two to three new positions. And we're trying to limit it to one. See how that goes, and we'll, we'll uh, look at whether we need to add additional staff at some point in the future after it's been up and operating for a while. Uh, electricity costs at the annex and city hall and other buildings, uh, again, that's just based on what our demand has been. We've tried to minimize electricity. We've got a lot of equipment in there to maintain our uh, temperatures and shut systems down on weekends. And uh, of course, uh, as you know, in your own homes, you're probably paying more for electricity than you used to, and we're no different than that. Uh, $25,000 we have the base budget for the crime control and fire prevention sales tax election to be held in November. And the committee, I believe, called that election Thursday. So this is the fun that. We have $17,000 for community needs assessment and strategic consolidated plan. This is a CDBG requirement every five years. Uh, we've got additional funding. This won't cover the whole thing, but we've got additional funding that came out of uh, amendments that you did with the grant fund budget. Uh, so we'll be conducting that process here. This is really one of those things that you're looking at. Everything that you need to look at in terms of what you think or what the community thinks its service needs are for uh, the future. And it serves kind of a baseline or a starting point for the development of the consolidated plan. And of course, the consolidated plan then drives where you allocate expenditures to. CDBG funds. Again, that's something that they require us to do. Uh, we got a relatively small amount, $12,000 for preventative maintenance at the Neely radio tower site. $10,000 for a variety of uh, small equipment at the MCL Grand. See the list there. Got a little bit. Uh, an increase in single audit fees from our auditor associated with various grants, including the CDBG program. Single audit is something that you have to do to when you have sourced the federal funds, you have to audit each of those federal grant funds separately. And then a the small amount, sorry, go ahead, John. Um, up on the top one, would that include the uh, huge video and sound cable that they've been laying across the floor to get to the black box room? They make they do one permanently across the map return. I don't think there's anything in this or that I'm not aware of. Jim? No, no there, there, it's not part of that. I'm sorry? No, no that's not included in there. That, that has not been used as frequently yet to justify doing that. Oh, okay. I just noticed that the last few functions that have been there, I keep seeing that cable tape across the floor, and I was just wondering what that was going to be more permanent. From the sound room over to the, you know, for I guess you guys use it for an overflow room. Yes, yeah. it, 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 that, that's that's actually only happened uh, twice. Yeah. Uh, and as we project more of that kind of use, we'll we'll be asking for that kind of thing. About now. Do, do we know how much that costs roughly? I don't have that figure, but I can find that. Okay. I'm just wondering. I just I, I think I saw it for the Burgess Town Hall and. Uh, yeah, something else I can't remember what it was, but it was a big event. Yes. All right, thank you. Was it the black box? They had the overflow room oh, the black okay. box. And so they were piping the they were feed. Basically, the feed over there, the sound and video and microphones, and they were laying this huge, like that big black cord yeah. right there. All the way across. Actually, Jim has a list of other things. He's, he's been very nice in responding to the question, but he actually has another list of other equipment. This is small portion of what you would like to have, <laughs> but uh, it's all we can fit in the base budget. So. I, I was just kind of wondering what it was, because I remember seeing uh, another really couple, you know, hit it with a cane, and I'm going like, man, she fell 
I think it would cost more than the cable would. I'm just saying. Okay, um, fund balance. This is 910 actual beginning and ending. And of course, the difference, the biggest part of that difference is the uh, pay as you go funding that we did for the animal shelter. So that's why you see that drop off. Uh, the 1011 budget was based on the beginning balance of 24.8. And of course, it came in at 26, seven better than expected. So that's where we uh, really would start in estimating the actual for the current year. And uh, you can see that the ending balance after some uh, drawdowns and reserves that we'll talk about later on would be 26.9 on an estimate basis. So that's where we would start uh, 11, 12 year, and uh, end with some drawdowns uh, that we'll talk about. Budgeting 25 133 is an ending balance. And this carried through that process starting with uh, last year's or the current year estimated actual 26.9 uh, revenues and expenditures balancing, uh, the transfers out amounting to 1.506 million. There's another 318,000 and 340 uh, one time expenditures. Leaving an ending fund balance of 25,133, and again a 15% reserve, 50% being calculated on a current operating fund to leave 16 million in undesignated reserves. So that 1.35 million that you saw in the previous slide is for a series of capital projects that uh, we historically have funded out of the operating fund four years, and then we had to gradually over the past two or three years draw those, or pull those out of the operating fund, and then uh, deal with them elsewhere. Uh, if you go back a minute, a couple slides, you know, you can see this change here. Uh, one of the things that was driving that also is the funding of some of those projects out of the, uh, the reserves. But because we're looking at a change in our ending balance from 24 to 26, in a sense, what we're doing is we're post-funding those improvements. Instead of funding a lot of the operating fund, we're waiting until the revenue materializes and then funding a lot of reserves. So that's really what we're kind of doing in this year's budget. We've waited until the revenue materialized. It's there, a higher number than what we expected. And so it gives us the flexibility now on those things that were delayed in last year's budget. So going forward again, 1.35 of that, that newfound reserve, if you want to call it that, is allocated in the base budget for these types of CIP pay-as-you-go projects, neighborhood rehab, alley rehab, drainage improvements, traffic improvements. Those are all categories that we used to fund directly out of the operating budget past had to be reduced. Got a new category, $150,000 here for screening wall repairs. Uh, we've run through all of our screening wall repair money and we still have a significant exposure out there to uh, costs in this area. That $150,000 uh, is just really a, a drop in the bucket, but it will help keep things from getting uh, really bad. Uh, there's several locations where entire walls have to be basically taken down and reconstructed scratch. And so later on I'm going to have some recommendations for actually adding to that uh, that money. Um, but again, you've got the capability of doing this out of reserves. You might think about it as a, again, a post revenue production allocation as opposed to pre allocation. And we've got $106,000 for ADA improvements uh, all over the city, a variety of types of improvements. Uh, 179,000 for obligations related to ED agreements. Uh, you can see the list down here, those are the ones that we're, we're dealing with right now. Uh, $50,000 for a spare radio controller for public safety. Uh, there's the uh, $50,000 for uh, PC and phone printer replacements that's coming out of reserves. We're in reference to $55,000 earlier out of the operating budget. 
365 for a portable sound system in the Art Center courtyard or anywhere else. Uh, 22,000 for CAD system and animal control, which will allow them to basically integrate with the police department, hopefully, and uh, instead of basically what they have right now is a kind of paper CAD system. Uh, it would tie into the, the dispatching system, the yeah. vision air, hopefully. It yeah. may not be the same product, there may be a, a patch of some kind that has to be put in there. We're still evaluating the types of systems, but the, the intent is to try to get a more consistent police department system, so the record keeping and everything is consistent. Uh, just a couple years ago, we went to a, uh, from an 800 trunking system to a Motorola Type 3, is that correct, Chief? You're on the radio side now. Yeah, yeah. that's the radio that's, side. But I'm saying, but this is animal this control will fit into that trucking system? Well, this is actually the, cap, the dispatching part of it, which is more of the, uh, the software associated with dispatching as opposed to the radio piece I'm with it. Yeah. I'm with it. They still be using radios. Yeah, they're still using the radios. Just All right, sorry. I was just making sure we can tell Okay, we got uh, some money for replacing canopy tents and tent side walls for special events. And we got $9,000 for buying some additional lighting at the new art center and decorations for the art center and city hall tree. Uh, one thing I want to make sure you're aware of is that we're recommending that a single tree be used right now. This uh, cost is associated with just a single tree. Uh, so that we can avoid those extra decorating costs. That tree's going to be in the... Over here in front of the City Hall. Be anywhere you want it, really. Well, I didn't know if it was going to be at the Art Center and City Hall, so I was wondering. City Hall's fine, of course. Didn't know yeah, we were just planning on putting it at City Hall. It could be where we all really want to put it. Sort of near. Is the other one that we ran in there? No, I don't think we own it. This is a slide showing some of the uh, unknowns, for the most part, uh, related to the use of future reserves. So we've got that $16 million in the undesignated reserves right now, but we still do have some other things uh, out there. Of course, technology is always uh, potentially used for those reserves, as uh, Larry and his staff uh, come up with the needs associated with maintaining the city's current system or systems. Uh, EV projects, of course, you never know what's going to be out there. Uh, Fire Station 8 is on here, uh, but that cost could be removed if the sales tax collection for the fire district passes. What is the uh, estimate on the 1 8th sales tax? What kind of revenue will they produce? Probably uh, 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 $2 million a year. Okay, so we'll go from six down to four, basically. Six, seven, to four, five. The that's well, yeah, the way, the way the plan that the committee looked at uh, the structure is that they would accumulate funds for the first several years, and it would be enough at the end of the program to pay for the entire station. 
improvements and anything else that goes beyond that will be up to the city to pay for. The committee was looking most recently at some enhancements that were quite extensive and I suspect they're going to get pulled back quite a bit uh, as they get more into the actual costs. So that the cost will come down, but it'll still be uh, significant. And then we talked about screening wall construction before, and uh, that, that one is just kind of dependent on the condition of screening walls and how we replace them, whether we put up the same type of screening wall as been, has been there before or something different. And uh, again, this year I'm using $150,000 out of reserves for that, and you can probably count on that happening for at least 10 years at that level. Yeah, let's see the range on those bottom three end zones. You know, what's ballpark? Could be here, it could be as much as this. Just to give us an idea of how big those okay. projects are in the overall scheme. Okay. Carol has a, a fairly lengthy list. That depends on if you want to leave a park or a covered park, right? What ballpark it is? For any one of them? The analogy of the Oh, yeah. Side. But yeah, the uh, reason for that being an unknown is, is this going to yeah, be? We, we had a workshop, uh, if you'll remember, about 10 months ago, maybe a year ago, where we talked about uh, those locations and the costs associated with them and some options for replacing the screening walls with different types of materials. Um, one of the problems is once you put up a masonry screening wall, it's hard to not replace it with a masonry screening just get a lot of, a lot of blowback on that. There are several cities around us that are doing that now because they have such continuing problems with the cases in the world. And they're coming to put in really nice looking uh, wood screen. Uh, yeah, 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 and and if you're right. Right. Carol had some options like that for council. There wasn't a lot of excitement at that. But maybe y'all look at it differently when we see the a lot of them have this uh, set of bricks, they have this solid pre constructed prefab screening wall. Yeah, there's lots of different options. But I mean, the, the deals last, I'm assuming those last longer than the, 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 the prefab concrete type. Prefab. Yeah, they tend to, there's some pros and cons associated with them. They, they uh, tend to not have the internal breakage that we've seen in some of the you know, brick by brick layup type of construction. Um, the key to any kind of masonry screening wall construction in Louisville is the construction of an adequate foundation. And that's been the problem for years, is that the screening walls are not constructed with the types of soils in mind that we have. And so the shifting of the soil that occurs during the summer just wrecks the walls. And when you complicate that by some, some uh, questionable design as far as the way the wall is laid up with those, those reinforcement, you remember those little reinforcement strips that were between the, the brick layers that are now rusting oxidizing, out. rusting out, and creating gaps. You're building something that is not going to last, and it hasn't lasted. So really, to build masonry back, we really need to beef the standard up, which costs more. And that's, I think, why we were looking at other alternatives, whether you could do a high-end wood fence that would be much easier to replace if you needed to, much less costly to replace if you needed to, but would look nice. But again, the problem is, to put a wood fence up where you've had a masonry against the neighborhood, you're going to get some feedback, certainly. So. We can do that. I yeah, can do that in a future workshop. Again, the money I've got set aside is really just kind of keep up with the most critical needs where we where a wall literally falls down and we have to put it back. Okay. The annual street and drainage program then uh, looks like this. Uh, we've got 940000 for concrete street rehab. That's out of the operating budget. Uh, where you see asterisks here, this is money for that program is coming out of the reserves instead of the operating budget. So these are neighborhood improvements uh, scheduled for Valley 3. Valley Rehab, try to do those in the same neighborhoods we can get them all out of, get them all out of the way at once. Asphalt maintenance, 
program. You can see the allocations here for those locations. Uh, traffic improvements uh, usually is one to two signals. It can be funded for $330,000. We also fund certain types of uh, other improvements like turn lanes, median and cuts, and things like that out of this, this line item. Uh, again, that's coming out of reserves. Sidewalk maintenance, screening wall maintenance, number that we talked about earlier, 150 out of reserve, 300 for drainage improvements, totaling 3. Point, just a little over $3 million for that street drainage program. Okay, personnel, and uh, you can see that as the city grows, the, the trend is to have that ratio of employees per 1,000 drop. Uh, we've seen that type of drop since it goes back even further up in this range in the 80s. Uh, so you can see it dropping from 7.9 to 7.1. Changes in the budget uh, in terms of personnel, not much uh, from last year. Uh, we deleted a vacant trainer position and we're basically uh, using a uh, contractor for what training that we need to do out of the HR department and we substituted an ADA compliance uh, specialist for that position. Uh, net effect is zero, but uh, keep up with the ADA issues in the city. Uh, well, then you just had to add somebody to do it uh, full time. So until so we catch up with that, uh, we'll be funding that position in the, uh, the general fund of the ADA specialist. <coughs> Uh, ITS uh, made a change, uh, essentially added one position, uh, assistant support position. They reallocated funding for the traffic services to get that done so that that cost is zero. Uh, community relations, we had a reclassification. Uh, it's actually uh, a gentleman behind us, I believe. Uh, Tim Green reclassified from senior media specialist to art center specialist to help out over there. And then community development, we had a shelter attendant position added for the base budget that I referenced earlier. Okay, so that's kind of the brief on expenditures. Not a whole lot different than, than last year. We sometimes have a fairly lengthy list of changes, and this year's uh, much less. We'll move on to the tax base discussion. Unless you all want to take a break, it's 10 15. Okay. Thanks, Rick.